Hi class, today I will be talking to you about section 3.2, the international system of units. And so I'm going to define SI as the revised metric system. And so you've likely heard of the metric system, and so I will probably use both SI and metric interchangeably when talking about these units of measurement. And so first I want to go over just review of the basic um, units that we use for SI. And so first would be length. The base unit would be meter, which is abbreviated by M. Then we have mass, which is typically in grams or G. Then we have temperature, which can be in either Kelvin or Celsius, but we'll do Kelvin for now, which is a capital K. Notice how I have a lowercase m and a lowercase g. Now I have a capital K. The uppercase and lowercase of these symbols does matter, so make sure to pay attention to that. And then time, we have seconds, which is lowercase s. And then amount of substance is measured in moles. So mole and abbreviated M-O-L. So for very small or large measurements, these um, units aren't always the best. So then we start using prefixes. And so prefixes will um, determine what power of 10 we have shifted. So if we look at the little diagram here, I'm sure you guys have all heard of, of King Henry doesn't usually drink chocolate milk, um, which is representation of kilo, hecto, deca, unit, uh, our base unit, and then deci, centi, milli. And so um, these are very important with using the SI. And so there are common units, but then there are relationships between these units. So Common metric units of length would be like obviously meters. We use kilometers a lot and centimeters. And so if you look at the table below, I've kind of laid out these relationships. So meter being our base unit, then kilometer, one kilometer is 10 to the third meters. So if we look over to the right at the little diagram there, that means if we jump one, two, three steps to get to the prefix kilo, that is um, gonna be at three powers of 10. And so for a uh, centimeter, the last one, another common one, here we have 10 to the second. So if we go from our unit and jump one, two, that's how we get two powers of 10. And so here um, on this diagram, it does also explain typically if you're going to shift to the decimal to the right or to the left. Um, otherwise, these relationships, remember, can be written as a fraction in a way that if we are doing conversions, which we will be in the next section here, that one kilometer is to 10 to the third meters. So you will see them in this form quite often coming up here in the next section. Okay, and so then for common units of volume, we have the liter, the milliliter, and then we need to talk about cubic centimeters. So liter is our base unit, and of course we have heard of milliliters. We talk about that a lot in chemistry. And so for every one liter, there's 10 to the third milliliters. And then we have this relationship between centimeters that are cubed and then milliliters. So how do we turn our length into a volume and then compare that to milliliters? So we have to remember that if something is cubed, that is a unit of volume, because volume is equal to, think of it as length 
times width times height, right? So we get some sort of, if these were all, let's say meters in our, then the units would be meters cubed. So in our case, we were looking at centimeters. And so if we think about a cube and we were trying to figure out its volume, and this was one centimeter, one centimeter, and one centimeter. So we have length, width, height. So then our volume here would be equal to one centimeters cubed, which now we know is the same thing as one mil. So how cool is that? And then moving on to common units of mass. And so those are going to be, of course, the gram, the kilogram, and the milligram. And so I have the relationships laid out here again in the table below. So remembering that kilo is big, so it's going to take a lot of grams to make up a kilo, where milligrams are smaller than grams, so it's going to take up a lot of milligrams to make up a gram. Okay, and so now we're going to switch over to units of temperature. And so of course here in America we're used to Fahrenheit, but in the scientific world, the two commonly used equivalent units of temperature are going to be Celsius and Kelvin. And just to make sure, um, as a reminder, think about temperature. Temperature is just the measure of how hot or cold an object is. And so um, we have, oh, I should have wrote these down here. Oh, well. So if we have Celsius, that is also has the symbol of degrees C, and then we have Kelvin, which is capital K. And so this first little asterisk here says the Celsius scale sets the freezing point of water at zero degrees Celsius, and then the boiling point of water is at 100 degrees Celsius. So there's a reason it's set up the way it is. Um, it's nice and convenient. And then for Kelvin, what's very important to note is that there is no degree symbol. Oops. So, no degree symbol. So saying degrees Kelvin is incorrect. And this is just the way that it is. So, um, now, Kelvin and Celsius, they have a relationship with each other. And it's just defined as Kelvin is equal to degrees Celsius plus 273. So all it is is pretty much a shift in the scale. But one change of degree on Celsius, on the Celsius scale, is the same as one Kelvin on the Kelvin scale. So it's really, again, just a shift of where this range of temperatures is. And so remember, if we have this relationship if we were to solve for, oops, other way around, degrees Celsius, that is equal to Kelvin minus 273. Okay, and then the last thing we have to talk about here is units of energy. And so energy is the capacity to do work or produce heat. And now the two common units of energy are going to be the joule, which is represented by capital J, and then the calorie, abbreviated as C-A-L, all lowercase. Um, and so joule is just SI for energy, where the calorie is the quantity of heat that raises the temperature of one gram of pure water by one degree Celsius. 
And so there's also a relationship between joules and calories. And so um, what these are defined as is one joule is equal to 0 0.2390 cal or one cal is the same as 4.184 joules. And that will not be the last time that you will see these conversions. So if you have any questions, please take the time to ask. Otherwise, we will continue on practice with these concepts.